I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture will be devoted uh, to mini theorems about circles. Most of them are very simple and trivial. Uh, one may be a little bit more difficult than, uh, than others, but they're all interesting. And uh, well, let's just you know go through them. Uh, okay, the theorem number one is about inscribed angles. So if you have a circle and you have an inscribed angle and this is a chord which supports this angle. Now this is another angle which is supported by the same chord. Now, and this is a central angle which is also supported by the same chord. So the theorem is that any inscribed angle is measured half the size of the central angle which is supported by the same chord. So this is twice as big as this. And consequently, you can just follow from this logic, another inscribed angle which is supported by the same chord since it also um, is measured half of the central angle, is supposed to measure exactly the same as the original inscribed angle. So all inscribed angles, all inscribed angles supported by the same chord are all uh, congruent to each other and measured as half of the corresponding central angle. Okay, so this is the theory. How can we prove it? First, we will prove it in a very trivial case. So let's consider a chord, a diameter, and inscribed angle, which is formed by a diameter and a chord, not just two any chords. But let's just consider that one of these chords is a diameter. Now, why is it easier and why is it like trivial? Well, because in this case, the central angle, which is supported by the same chord, and inscribed angle, they have common side, right? Since diameter is um, uh, going through the center, and the center is basically a vertex of a central angle, we have this particular picture. So this is a central angle. AB A, B, C is inscribed angle. O, A, O, C is a central angle, which is supported by the same arc, the same chord, A, C. Now, why is A, O, C twice as big as A, B, C? Well, for a very simple reason. AOC is an um, uh, exterior angle for triangle OBC, which means this exterior angle is measured as a sum of two other angles not supplemental with it. But OB and OC are two radiuses which means that these angles are exactly the same. And since AOC is equal to this plus this, and they are equal to each other, it means it's twice as big as one angle ABC. So, in case one of the chords is a diameter, then inscribed angle is half of the corresponding central angle which is supported by the same arc. Now, what if our angle is not, inscribed angle is not such as this one? So um, it's not the uh, diameter as, a, as one of the two chords. Let's say it's something like this, A prime. So our angle is A prime BC, not ABC. But we still can draw a diameter from B through O to get to the point A and consider two separate cases. 
this angle is half of this. Now, this angle is half of this for the same reason, absolutely, because again, this is exterior angle and this is equal to this because it's still isosceles triangles, all our radiuses. Which means some of these is equal to half of some of these. So it's exactly the same result that the inscribed angle is equal to half of the center. All right, there is one more case, just for completeness, but it's actually simple. What if our uh, inscribed angle is such that it's not on both sides of the diameter? Let's say both chords are on one side of the diameter. Let's consider it this way. If this is a diameter, for instance, our angle is this. How to prove that this angle, inscribed angle supported by this arc, is half of this central angle? Actually, in a very, very similar case. In this case, we have divided our angle A prime B C as uh, we represent it as sum of these two angles. In this case, we will represent it as a difference. Instead of a sum, we will represent it as a difference between. So this angle is equal to this minus this. And both uh, angles, this angle and this angle, are measured as half of correspondingly this and this. So the difference between them is measured as half of the difference between these two, which is exactly the central uh, angle supported by the same arc. So in any case, wherever um, one of the two chords is located on, on, on the same side, on the same side of, uh, of a diameter as uh, another chord, or on different sides of the diameter, no matter where it is, it's, the angle is represented either as a sum or as a difference uh, of uh, correspondingly um, uh, inscribed angles with one of the sides coinciding with the diameter. And the theorem is, is, is true for all cases. Now, as a consequence from this, uh, you you obviously understand that any other angle which is supported by the same arc or the same chord is still equal to exactly um, the same half of the central angle, um, which means that, let me just take this away and this away, So we have an inscribed angle and the central angle, which is supported by the same arc. And then if you will take any other angle, which is supported by the same arc, inscribed angle, it's also exactly equal to half of the central, which means these are equal to each other. So all inscribed angles supported by the same arc, the same chord, are equal to each other and equal to half of the same central angle which is supported by the same arc. And as another consequence, let's consider all angles which are supported by half a circle. So our central angle um, which is supported by the same half a center, half a circle is 180 degrees, right? Which makes this angle equal to 90 degrees, half of this, right? Since inscribed angle is always half of the uh, central angle supported by the same arc, if this is 180, this is 90. So any angle which is supported by a diameter, by a half a circle, is equal to 90 degrees. So all these angles are 90 degrees.
because they're all half of 180 degrees. So they're all congruent among themselves and all equal to 90 degrees. All angles supported by the end. Okay, so this is my first mini theorem. It's actually mini, it's a little longer, but it's, it's really, proof itself is it, really trivial. Okay, another, even simpler. If you have a chord and you have a diameter which is perpendicular to this chord, then uh, this diameter bisects the chord. Now, how can that be proven? Well, obviously, when you want to prove congruency of certain things, you have to include them into some kind of triangles, right? So, obviously, we will use this chord AB. Uh, this is a diameter, and we know it's perpendicular to the chord. Now, we know that AO and BO are radiuses, which means they are, con they are congruent to each other, which makes a triangle a AOB isosceles. And we know that in an isosceles triangle, altitude to the third side is also a median as well. So if this is the perpendicular, it cuts it in half. Inverse theorem is also true. If it cuts, if the diameter cuts in half the chord, then it's a perpendicular to this chord, exactly from the same property of isosceles triangles when the median is an altitude and the bisector of an angle as well. So these are two uh, congruent angles as well. Okay. Uh, next. Next is asymmetry. Well, you feel that diameter is kind of an axis of symmetry, right, for, uh, for a circle. Let's prove even a stronger theorem. Let's draw two parallel chords. and diameter perpendicular to these two chords. Then, the statement of this theorem is that these arcs are symmetrical to each other. Now, what does it mean, actually? Well, it means that if you will take any point here, draw a perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, which is our diameter, and continue with the same lengths, you will hit the point on another arc, and vice versa. Now, why is it true? Well, because precisely because of the previous theory. Because whenever you draw a line which is perpendicular to a diameter, you start it on a point uh, of a circle, you end it on a point of a circle, you basically make up a chord which is perpendicular to diameter by construction, and because of the previous theorem, divide it in half, which means if you prolong it on the same distance, you get exactly that point. So these two points are symmetrical. And same for any pair of points in between these two initial parallel chords. So every point here has symmetrical point here. So this is a theory. If you have two chords, then the arcs, uh, corresponding arcs, which are cut from, from the circle between these two chords, are symmetrical to each other, which actually leads to uh, another a simple, basically, statement that if you don't have any chords, then the left part of a circle is symmetrical to the right part of the circle. I mean, I conditionally call it left or right. It can be up or down or whatever. Uh, so in any case, if you have a diameter, any diameter, it would be an axis of uh, symmetry for 
for a circle for exactly the same reason I just mentioned to you. Uh, so if you don't have any initial chords, you just have a diameter, then again you start from any point, you draw a perpendicular, you continue by the same size, and you obviously hit a circle somewhere, and you know that since this is a perpendicular to a chord, these two supposed to be equal, so that's why these points are symmetrical. So any diameter is an axis of symmetry for a circle. This diameter, this diameter, this diameter, any diameter is a, an axis of symmetry. Circle is very symmetrical. Another simple theorem, if you have two congruent chords, then they are uh, positioned on the same distance from a center. So distance from a center is obviously along the perpendicular. Now how can we prove that these two perpendiculars are equal in lengths if the chords are congruent? Very simple, again, triangles. All these are radiuses, and if this is congruent to this, you have two triangles congruent to each other by three sides, and that's why their altitudes are congruent as well. Now, a little bit more difficult theorem is, um, is it's, it's actually growing from this one. Okay, if chords are equal in length, then they are equal in the distance from a center. What if one chord is greater than another? Uh, longer than another. Well, you obviously feel that the longer the chord, the closer it's supposed to be to the center. The longest chord, which is a diameter, is on a zero distance from a center. It passes through center, right? And the shorter chords are on the further distance from a center. Okay, we would like to prove. Now, this is a little bit more involved. And before addressing this particular theorem, I would like actually to recall uh, a couple of other properties of triangles. Okay, one property is this. Let's say you have two triangles, one and two, with these congruent sides. Now, it actually has been addressed in one of the lectures before, but I will repeat it right now, that if this angle is greater than this, between the correspondingly congruent sides, then this side, opposite to this bigger angle, uh, is longer than the side which corresponds to a smaller angle. How can we prove it? Well. Let's just take this triangle and super, superposition it uh, on, onto this triangle. Because these are congruent to each other, this point will go to this, and this point will go to this, and this point will go to somewhere here. So if this is ABC, and this is GEF, then DGF is congruent to ABC by construction, basically. So this angle is the same as this one, even if it doesn't look like that in my drawing. All right, so how can I prove that EF is smaller, is longer than GF? Okay, here is how. Look at the angle e, uh, EGG. By the way, this is exactly the same size. AB is equal to DG. Okay, now, angle EDG, I would like to draw a bisector of this angle. Okay? And this is point which I call, let's say, K. Now, 
EK and KG are congruent to each other. They are equal in lengths. Why? Well, because the triangle DEK, DGK, what these two triangles have in common, aside, then these two are congruent, ED and GD, and the angle is it's a bisector, which means these two angles are congruent to each other as well. So DEK triangle and DKG are congruent, which means this is congruent to this. Now we will use a, uh, a triangle inequality FKG. FK plus KG is greater than FG. Correct? Triangle inequality. FK plus KG greater than FG. But since KG and KE are the same, and what is FK plus KE? FK plus KE, that's EF. So that's our side. And this is exactly what needs to be proven, that EF is longer than GF. So as long as this angle is bigger, this side is bigger, provided that two other sides are correspondingly congruent to the other two sides of the other triangle. So again, if you have a situation of two triangles with two pairs of congruent sides, then depending on the angle between them, the size of the third side would be bigger against the bigger angle. Okay, that's one of the properties which we have already discussed before in one of the lectures about triangles. I just wanted to remind it to you, and it's an interesting little proof anyway, so it doesn't I don't mind actually to repeat it. Uh, it's, it's an interesting proof. Now I would like to prove another theorem, mini theorem, which I will use uh, later on. And this is about uh, right triangles. Now, if you have a bunch of right triangles with common hypotenuse, So these are all right angles. So they have common hypotenuse. Now, my statement is that the bigger this angle is, the bigger the leg um, against this, across this, uh, this angle. This angle is bigger than this, so this side is bigger than this. Now, how can I prove that? Well. Actually, I will use something which I have already uh, explained before, namely that all these right angles, the vertices of all these right angles, are lying on a circle. Remember? All angles inscribed into a circle supported by a diameter, this is a diameter. So I'm using my hypotenuse as a diameter. So all these triangles are right triangles because they are supported by a diameter. So um, the locus of all the vertices of the right angle of all the triangles with the same hypotenuse are making a circle. Now I will use this to prove that against bigger angle, this bigger than this one, lies bigger uh, leg. How can I prove it? 
very easy. Since any inscribed angle is half of the corresponding central angle, I know that this, if this inscribed angle, let's use letters now, inscribed angle CAB is greater than DAB. Now, what's the corresponding central angle? For CAB, which is supported by this arc, by this chord, the corresponding central angle is COB, right? Now, what's the corresponding angle for DAB? Well, it's supported by this arc, so the angle would be this. Now, in the same way as against, uh, as uh, in the same way as this angle, CAB, is greater than this angle, DAB, their central, corresponding central angles, which are, each one of them is equal to double uh, uh, inscribed angle, also will be, uh, one will be greater than another. So COB will be greater than DOB. So I will, what I actually have accomplished, I have reduced my more, uh, I would say, uh, difficult task uh, to prove that uh, the lag against bigger uh, acute angle uh, is bigger than the lag across the smaller angle. I have actually reduced it to uh, another problem related to circles. If I have a circle and I have a central angle, then the bigger central angle, the bigger the chord. Like in this particular case. Or I should actually probably draw it a little bit more like I have in this drawing. So I have a circle. I have one central angle, which is BD. And I have another central angle, C. So this angle is bigger than this one. And I, I would like to, to prove that this is bigger than this. Well, which is kind of obvious, right? Okay, so let me take this away. And let me draw this again too. And let's discuss this particular topic. So you have two uh, central angles. So angle AOB and angle AOC. So uh, now why is the angle the bigger angle corresponds to a bigger chord? That's an interesting actually. Um, topic. I uh, kind of assume that this is an obvious thing, but right now I'm just thinking that maybe it's not that obvious. Let me think about this a little. And how can we actually prove that this is the case? Mm -hmm. Draw it slightly differently.
Okay, just bear with me and uh, let's think about how to prove that this particular chord, chord corresponding, which corresponds to a smaller angle, <coughs> central angle, is smaller. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. Um, the one which the theorem which I have just proven before, remember, if you have two triangles, which have two pairs of congruent sides, then depending on the size of this angle, the bigger angle corresponds to a bigger opposite side. Well, here we have exactly the same thing. We have triangle AOB and AOC. AO in both cases is the same, and OB is also the same. So in this case, we have even more complicated case when the sides are different. In this case, all four sides are the same. This and this and this and this. And that's why by this theorem, AB is shorter than AC, because the angle AOB is less than angle AOC. Okay, so we have proven two different things. So this is the one thing before, and the second thing I have just proven that if you have a right triangle a bunch of right triangles, basically. Then the bigger angle corresponds to a bigger opposite leg. Now we can actually approach this problem which I wanted to do in the very beginning, which is the bigger chord is supposed to be closer to a center. Now, how can we prove this? So, we have two chords. One is bigger than another. Now, I would like to prove that this distance is less than this distance. All right. So, we will do these triangles as usual. One chord is AB, another is BC. So, AB is greater. Okay. <coughs> uh, oh, by the way, I did not really mention before, with these right triangles, the theorem is uh, true from both sides. Bigger angle corresponds to bigger side, and bigger side corresponds to bigger angle. And uh, it, it's very easy to prove, because if you consider the opposite, uh, what if the angle is not really bigger against the bigger side? Then it's smaller or equal. If it's equal, then triangles are supposed to be equal. But if it's smaller, then the corresponding side is supposed to be smaller. So the inverse theorem is very easily easily proven. So in this particular case, we have a very similar situation. We have, let's call it M and N, we have triangle O, N, B. And let's consider and compare it with a triangle M, O, B. You see they have, they are both right triangles, right, because these are perpendiculars. And they're both sharing the same hypotenuse, OB. Which means that if this chord is greater than this, half of this chord is greater than half, which means that this angle is greater than this angle. And if that's true, then the corresponding 
uh, the other angle uh, of this right triangle, OMB. If this angle is greater than NOB, then this angle is smaller than this angle. Because MBO plus MOB is 90 degrees, right? Because there are two acute angles of a, a triangle. So if this angle is greater than this, then this angle is smaller than this. Because some of these should be 90 and some of these should be 90. And now we are using this uh, theorem again that if you have two right triangles with the same hypotenuse, again, smaller angle, you have a smaller catheters. That's why this is smaller than this. So the bigger chord corresponds to a smaller distance to a center. And that concludes my last mini theorem, which I wanted to present today. Uh, as usually, I address you to unisor.com as the source of uh, many interesting facts about mathematics, especially parents. They can control the educational process of their uh, students. And, uh, well, welcome to unisor.com. And uh, the mathematics are basically at your fingertips. Thank you.